dead draw gaming. Like no one ever was. And welcome back to Madison TCG Regional Round 5. I'm your host, Jeffrey Saran Rap Saran. Uh, right next to me is Kurt Do Snacks Dubé. Uh, great lunch break, uh, back in the booth, and uh, ready for another great Round 5 matchup. What do we have going on here today, Kurt? Uh, very interesting. Uh, a little bit more standard. We have Joseph McClure, uh, whose list I'm taking a look at right now. Uh, Buzz Like and Rock. Uh, kind of traditional, making the concessions that we would see, you know, to fit that B string in there, the Deansa Prism uh, from, for, from from Forbidden Light, uh, but kind of what I'll call what you'd expect the stock list mm -hmm. to be. Absolutely, and on, on the other end, we have Nick Capo Bianco. He's playing something a little bit new, uh, in a sense, or I guess coming back alive. Um, it's, a, it's a resurgence of the Lapras deck. We've heard some different hype about this deck going, coming in here, and uh, it's awesome to have it on stream now at 4-0. Absolutely. Uh, Limitless TCG guys have been uh, uh, hyping it up a little bit. Really got a big boost from uh, Volcanion uh, mm -hmm. Prism uh, from Forbidden Light. Absolutely. I think the issue with Lapras before was, and what kind of made it, dive down the, the standard hole that is and the, it couldn't hit the 200 plus HP deck guys you know the, the deck was meant to like hit hard and hit aggro that 190 you can attack with but now you have the Volcanian Prism Star which can spread 20 damage around and putting those putting Lapras within one shot numbers on a lot of different Pokemon can't be uh, overlooked that Volcanian Prism does have uh, the Jet Geyser ability uh, it's discard a basic water energy from your hand and your opponent essentially escape ropes yep Yep, so. um, and you can really uh, get your opponent to maybe make some misplays. Yeah, it's like it puts your opponent in a worse spot to where they can't, you can't predict what's on their mind because it's such a like a, a weird nuance to happen in the middle of a game. Yep, 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 yep. It's a good assist to have alongside your Guzmas and stuff. You know, just see how your opponent reacts. Maybe you get to use a different supporter that turn. Uh, maybe they kind of overthink things, yep. uh, promote the wrong thing, or. Quite, quite seldomly, you do see it though, you have uh, one in the active, one on the bench, and you can just quickly switch those around mm -hmm. and take a knockout on the Pokemon you actually want to target down, or the one that they're trying to protect by having on the bench. I think the great thing about Lapras too, it has insane energy acceleration through the form of Max Elixir and Aqua Patch. Uh, kind of uh, the days of old uh, Turbo Dark mm -hmm. and Expanded, uh, where we had Dark Patch and similarly uh, Max, Max Elixir. Elixir. So, shuffling up here, getting a, a couple good looks. We got the dice roll. Um, I'd be honest, we, we can't hear them, so we don't know who's going first quite yet. The die is on uh, McClure's side, so I'm assuming it's him. Uh, but uh, who do you favor in this matchup? I, I'd like to think, uh, you know, the tried and true Buzzle Lycanroc can really uh, put a lot of pressure on this Lapras deck. Um, but to be quite honest, I kind of hope uh, Lapras can pull this out. Um, I 100% think that Lapras can take this. Uh, it's a little bit faster of an energy accelerator, and essentially it's, it's kind of like Buzzwool, uh, minus the spread damage that Buzzwool has. Uh, so, and, and already Lapras can hit that 190 with Choice Band. Exactly, and that's the perfect number, exactly what he wants to be able to hit against those big Buzzwools. Um, Joe not going to be able to leverage uh, that baby Buzzwool because he's only playing one copy, unlike Xander, who we saw round one playing three copies. And I think it's going to be really interesting. It's going to be kind of the race to who gets the most energy out. Absolutely. Something of note here, uh, McClure really helping out Nick because he's playing the Brooklet Hills. Nick is not. Nick, yeah, Nick is Oh, Nick is playing Brooklet yeah, Hills. Yeah, it's kind of hard to see there on the list, but yeah, they're both playing Brooklet Hills. So the first one to it, the other one get the kind of the ultra ball fodder there. Exactly. <laughs> it's not going anywhere. Exactly. Uh, my, my bad on the, the read there. I was going to say, that's something that Nick's going to be able to take huge advantage of uh, to get those tech Pokemon like the Manaphy to get that free retreat. So back to that Manaphy, this is also uh, interesting that he plays two Manaphy, no Floatstone. He wants to guarantee that he can have free reign of being able to retreat through the Lapras. Because that Blizzard Bird attack, once you attack with it, you can't use that same attack the next turn. We've got a lot of uh, exchanging of headsets here. Uh, not too sure what's going on. Since their headsets are off, uh, we're going to calm down a little bit on the deck discussion um, so, while we get this sorted out. So uh, I guess the thought would be here is uh, we had a little bit of a rant uh, previous before here with some Q&A, but maybe let's talk about the tournament as a whole right now. Like, you know, we see a lot of Malamar, see a lot of... <laughs> <laughs> intricate Zorg variants that are pretty it's pretty awesome to watch the Exeggutor earlier today but any other decks that kind of excite you here? Um, really really excited I mentioned it a little bit in our Q&A se session but something I've been keeping my eye on Quad Hoopa essentially attacking Hoopa with weakness policy because mm -hmm. a lot of these Buzzwool decks are cutting down field blowers mm -hmm. um, from one to none it is big that's huge once that weakness policy attached 
and what essentially would be a good matchup for you through the baby buzz will your buzz is only doing just the 30 damage now exactly not a lot of uh, solid attacking options once that weakness policy is on and once they take out your baby buzz yep so we're still seeing if we can uh, get the, the little hiccup with the headphones here um, we've each got a starter looks like we're just kidding up ready to go and uh, it is on oh double lele start not exactly how you dream it up at least at least it's on both sides though fortunately <laughs> that's very true that's very true ultra ball from nick um i think i see an aqua patch in there a guzma choice band uh it's a really awkward an hand. um i'm gonna think he's gonna want to just assure himself a lapras here um yeah and, and and go from there yeah i think i think we're gonna see a lapras here uh maybe attach I don't see energy's hand actually, but probably Lapras is an easy end, which actually just discarded. So, curious what he's gonna go here. Blele, Cynthia. That does not seem like where he would like to be uh, necessarily in this exact situation. But we see the Lapras. Um, actually, uh, okay. And All Ultra right. Ball, Aqua Patch, Choice Band gone. So he's just he's just ripping his whole hand away. You see, he has Sycamore in there. Get his Lapras, get his Rimraid, get the Essentials, and he's going to get that No Hand Sycamore. Will we see a high five? Stay tuned. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The the pressure's on uh, <laughs> to see if we can actually uh, get a little camaraderie down in the booth here. Uh, not a lot of love lost between uh, <laughs> Roz Koth and, uh, in that round two. <laughs> and clean Sycamore, no high fives. They're keeping it professional here. The Max Licks are off the top, going to be doing a lot of work for him. Uh, and we did see that water energy uh, down at the, as the last card he drew. So he will be getting his attachment uh, for this turn for sure. So actually, he's probably going to Ultra Ball to his Zap. I think he's probably going to Ultra Ball his water energy away because you can instantly, right now, put two water energy on that Lapras with Max Lixer and Aqua Patch. Yep. Uh, Manaphy, obviously, to get that retreat with Tapu Lele. Um, we're going to see Aqua Patch. We're going to see a Max Elixir. And I think he has one more energy in hand, uh, which... Uh, a Lapras coming in doing a, a potential 190 turn one against this Buzzwool deck. Huge. It's, it's very scary to see that Manaphy go down against this deck, though, because uh, Bloodthirsty Eyes. Uh, yeah. 120 HP is incredibly fragile in this format right now, and uh, it could be an easy two prize for McClure. As uh, Russell would say, uh, no respect on that Max Elixir. He doesn't need to see the other five cards. Pluck the, pluck the water off the top, put it down. Aqua Patch. This is an insane turn one. This, this is about this, dream scenario. He is exploding right now, and <laughs> Joseph has to be a little bit intimidated right now. Yeah, he knows the water's safe um, on his active Tapu Lele. No, uh, no team uh, flare grunts. Yeah, probably going to be coming out of his opponent. So he's that just waiting, and he's just going to feed on whatever uh, Joseph puts down on the board. Fortunately, Joseph had a Cynthia because I saw about three to four different fight energy in his hand. Uh, so uh, luckily for him, he had a draw score there to kind of reset for his turn. Typically when you do, uh, you know, play your Cynthia down turn one, you'd at least like to play something out of your mm -hmm. hand. Um, he is playing three float stones, so he's probably going to try and work towards that, maybe uh, try and mitigate this explosive start that Nick had by focusing his energies on a buzzwall. It's still scary right now, too, because you, you, if you get a buzzwall right now and you just do the chip three damage, it's just a retreat, energy to Lapras, choice man, Knockout. Two prizes, thank you. Now, you know, that would put uh, Joseph in that uh, B-string range that we have talked about. Does he uh, have another Pokemon? He doesn't have an Ultra Ball or any other way to get a Pokemon. This could be oh a Oh, boy. Oh, boy. This could very potentially be a Donk with the Choice Man. Oh, uh, Max Elixir off the top? That's why he left Lapras on the bench. Oh, my Bang. gosh. He is drawing everything. And that so, was so Choice Man seals it here, right? Choice Man seals the deal here. Uh, <laughs> the writing will be on the wall for McClure in. Yeah, quick game one potentially. How many choice bands is Nick running today, Jeff? Uh, so Nick is running the the quad special. He has four everything: four Aquapash, four Guzma, four Elixir, four choice band. And uh, uh, McClure dodging a little bullet there. No choice band to come down. However, if he has an you'd, be, ball. you'd be hard pressed to say uh, that he's uh, he's reeling. I think it's safe to say McClure is reeling. Got a retreat there. I think I see a Brooklyn Hill. Probably doesn't want to put that down and help, uh, exactly. help Joe out that's at a, all. That's a very good point there to not put that down because, like you were saying, you know, Joseph could actually get a Lycan Rock, Buzzwell, anything there to assist, his, assist over there. All right. We're going for the Ice Beam GX, which is paralysis and 100 damage. 100 damage paralysis, correct. 
the, what this allows him to do, he still has access to his Blizzard Burn next turn. Um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, it really puts the screws to Joe to figure out a different way to get this out of the active. Yeah, Heart Retreat is not an option here, but I do see a Sick board, but he's going to lose a lot if he goes through the Sick board. But he has to with this choice at this point. Lapras can attack a Blizzard Burn next turn and win the game. We see a, a rough Sick I think that's an N. Lycanroc, Guzma, Max Elixir, Strong. Uh, Nick really just coasting right now. Not, he's not too worried about much. The fortunate thing for Joseph right now is that there's only one Lapras on the field. While Lele, yes, is getting powered up, Lapras is the only true threat currently. So we see the Remoraid come down uh, and a Brooklyn Hill, which is, uh, you know, at this stage in the game, Joe just needs something. Yep. So uh, you have to go for the Baby Buzz here or a Rock Rook because putting the Buzzle down is just, just so much of a liability, which is unfortunate when your deck has three of them. Yep, exactly. Um, he's eyeing up the Big Buzz, Buzzwool GX. Uh, we kind of see him rifling through. I think I did see the Deancey. I believe I did see the baby Buzzwool as well. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of considerations here for uh, Mr. McClure. Uh, and, you know, going through here, Wayne Allen's options here. And, uh, you know, like, like I was saying, I think the baby Buzz is the way to go. 190 HP is so easy to hit right now. And it's such a fully loaded Lapras. And it looks like he went with Big Boy Buzz. Big Boy Buzz. Um, Probably going to see an energy attachment. I honestly, Nick has been able to, able to get out, but his hand is kind of flat right now. Well, here's the thing. So look at that. Oh, well, Nick had two elixirs in his hand. Yep. So with Brooklyn Hill out now, Lapras, double elixir, I got two of these boys out now. And Octillery comes rolling off the top this, for our boy. He I, is ignited, my friend. These, he is on these fire. These decks are, like, incredibly fast to, like, to get going. So I wonder at one point you kind of think to yourself, should I just scoop and get the next two games out of the way? Uh, I, I would be leaning towards that, especially once I see these Max Elixirs roll out. Yes. Um, you know, Nick doing his best impression. <laughs> Uh, Nick doing his best impression of the Ohio, ri Ohio River right now. Uh, it's on water, but it's on fire at the same time. So we see him go for the Volcanian Prism Star, a new card from the Forbidden Light set that essentially is what helped this deck come back to life. Uh, and go back to what Kirk was saying earlier, to that ability, uh, forcing your opponent to uh, switch their active with their bench by discarding a water. Um, and I can do two things. If he actually you know, does the ability, he can either make him bring up the River Raid or the Buzzle, which are both bad and those are Tough choice for Joseph in this, in this case. Another great thing about that ability is it does load up that discard pile to, and triggers all his Aqua Patches. Uh, keeps them live throughout the game. Mm -hmm. Max Elixir number two. Uh, let's see if you can get a little bit luckier here. And the man is running 50% on uh, Max Elixirs. Have we seen four? Maybe only three. I think only three. I think all right, three. so a little below average. He had the Aqua blabber. Patch Max Elixir combo earlier, so... But they're in there. He plays 13 water energy, so surprising enough that <laughs> I'm surprised he missed those there. Uh, one in hand, natural attach. Going to lean on that uh, Volcanion a lot. So Volcanion attack for three energy does 20, uh, does 100 base to the active and does 20 damage to each of the opponent's bench Pokemon. That's we it. just got a Guzma rolling off the top. Free retreat with Manaphy back into Lapras. Did we get the, the choice, choice band? band? Yes. yes, we did. That's exactly and what we were just talking about the previous turn. Like, do you bench that or the baby buzz? I would be hard pressed. I don't know what can roll off the top of Joe's deck here to to make him feel like he's got a shot in this one. But uh, you know, nine minutes in, or excuse me, eight minutes in, and some change, we might have to just move on here. It looks like there's, it two, there's two beast ring in his hand, so I guess there is some potential there for you know setting up two buzzwolves. But he still has three Guzma left in his deck, and Lele's to get to it. So and him being Nick, so it's it's gonna be tough. It is going to be difficult. Luckily, you know, we saw that first turn attachment on Tapu Lele, which will give him the option if he does double beast ring onto uh, Big Boy and he probably rolls. Retreat. He'll be able to at least hard retreat, um, and then uh, you know probably will flip that GX marker. I guess that's a good point there because going back to where we thought he might have brought into the Lapras and he brought the Volcanion Prism Star. Um, that, that buzzle takes out his Lapras. That's really the only threat currently on the field. Yeah. I mean, Lele can hit him for 100, 130, depending on Troy Span or any energy attachments there. Uh, but, you know, about here, if you think I was Lapras right now, he actually could be in a pretty good spot. Yeah, and that's something I was talking about when, uh, you know, he drew those six cards and didn't hit the choice band off the Cynthia. Um, he didn't have much going on. The only real reason he was able to get that Volcanion on the board was because uh, Joseph played down that Brooklet Hill. Mm -hmm. And then he opted to prioritize the Volcanion, uh, maybe not taking into consideration how good Beast Ring is. Uh, and we see a Sycamore. I'll be hard-pressed to say if Joe misses an energy here. If he misses an energy, then you have to pick up the cards and go to game two at that point. But there's no way he does. There's one, two. 
uh, Remoraid, Max Elixir. He's got a bunch of stuff there. Uh, even you, Octillery to evolve. Do you go ahead and do the manual attach, or do you uh, save it and play Max Elixir? Um, based on what his hand composition is, um, if he has another P-string or something like that, or doesn't yeah. feel like Nick will be able to take a KO to get him out of the, the hot zone mm -hmm. uh, where those are live, he might he might want to you know not play the max elixir or attach from hand leave those energies in his deck mm -hmm. to, to be able to use those. So uh, this is actually a good pretty good player. I like this because he one narrows hand down. He's probably going to end up playing that max elixir on the uh, on the current buzz is loaded up and then a bit of hand for four. Uh, which again, as I mentioned, if he hits that B string, yeah, we're in business. Brings him right back into this game with the fast acceleration that both these decks bring to the table. I'm not even going to say it'll bring him back into this game. I think it'll make him a heavy favorite. Manual attachment, strong energy. So he's kitted up for the knockout on Lapras here. Uh, see, this is really interesting to me. I, I guess at the end of the day, that's where it's going to go. But I feel like I would have almost played the Elixir first. Just just to kind of figure out, I mean, one, do I hit it? Um, and I can put it on this other buzz here. Uh, but maybe what I see a beast ring on as Abyssal Hand. Like a couple little things that I might have waited to try to figure out. But a first Abyssal 5 yeah. uh, uh, could be good. Five cards coming from uh, that Abyssal Hand ability really going to, uh, to kind of put the screws back on Nick. You know, I think a big turning point in this game was getting that Volcanion instead of another Lapras. Yes. Um, you know, obviously, you know, going sub-50 on uh, your max elixirs is a big deal, mm -hmm. uh, especially when you're playing 13 energy. However, like, that's part of the game, right? I was just about to mention, if you can get a Rock Rift down right now, he's really solid, and there it goes right on cue. Um, trying to see what the rest of his hand is currently. Uh, we did see the fighting energy go down. Uh, okay. Floatstone, conserving the energy. Retreat. Uh, I think we're going to see an absorption here. Absorption GX should be the... the Attack of choice here, yep. Okay, so for for how good of a start Nick had, he was not able to convert. And again, I can't say it enough. You know, he did an attachment, a manual attachment on that Tapu Lele. He prioritized the Volcanion over another Lapras. And now we're kind of in this weird spot where he doesn't really have a, a really strong follow-up attacker. This Lele is doomed to go down to a Knuckle Impact. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly the point there. And... Uh it, the crazy thing is, it, the explosiveness of both these decks is showing it's like true colors right now. Did Nick just Ultra Ball and fail? I think he did. Which means uh, his Lapras is... I thought I saw him eyeing a Lapras just then, though. So I wonder... I'm almost certain I saw him eyeing a Lapras and then changed his mind. Maybe he's just thinning out his hand. Oh, he did grab it. It's in his hand. Oh, well, good on me. Guess I totally missed that. Energy switch. So he plays two of those, and for this exact reason, you know, move energies off and load up another Lapras here. So if he can actually hit some elixirs and I think I saw an patches, aqua patch there, yep. So aqua patch attached could actually <laughs> be exactly what he needs, and there's a sycamore in his hand too. So he could he could very well do some <laughs> retaliation right back this at him. This is so incredibly swingy with all these powerful cards, cranking out energy, uh, another energy switch, which means he can, you know, hard retreat, nab it, move up off the Volcanion. Um, oh, this is insane. So he's, he could probably, he could like free retreat the Lele. If he wanted to, he switched to the Volcanion, Sycamore. Great, great call there, Jeff. Um, again, that Volcanion going to pressure his, uh, his opponent very much. So he's looking for that choice band again. Uh, did we get there? The way he drew that sixth card makes I me feel like. I think it's like the sixth one right behind that water energy, but he's not attaching it right away, so maybe not. The way he was drawing those and, and peeled that sixth card makes me think it might not be in there. I'm going field blower. Uh, muscle band is gone. Floatstone going to hit the discard. Uh, another water energy. Yeah, it, it, yeah. from what it looks like here, he definitely missed a choice band. Uh, <laughs> if I was him, nothing would have slapped on the table instantly. <laughs> yeah, no sense in slow rolling that. Remoraid comes down. Um, really interesting that he doesn't save that for another attack spot since he already has an artillery set up. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe he's confident that this Lapras will survive now that he knows that Joseph's bench is full. Well, the great thing about it is uh, without a choice being, he's capped at 180, right? So, and he can't bench the Diancy right. to do the extra damage modifier there. So, in reality, unless he has another choice ban uh, where he runs three right now, uh, he's in a safe spot, but it's, it's kind of risky. Yeah, uh, I mean, a strong energy would uh, do it as well. Yep. Um, kind of uh, Lapras decks of old used to put those Fighting Fury belts to, to really boost that HP to 230. Mm -hmm. We're not seeing it here. Uh, 190, such a key number now that Buzzwall's in the format, and mm -hmm. uh, you've just got to be hitting that all day long. 190 and 210, big key numbers with choice bands 100% needed for the deck. 
we've got a very, very nice looking Ultra Ball there. Buzzwool, Brooklet Hill, going to hit that discard. As we mentioned before, that Ultra Ball fodder. Mm -hmm. and yeah, exactly. The point right now is just kind of, I'm assuming to get rid of some stuff that I definitely don't need. I almost like to grab a Lycanroc GX, but uh, Double okay. Abyssal Hand is pretty powerful. Double Abyssal Hand is powerful. Might already have the Lycanroc in hand. Uh, we do know he super rotted it back in. Mm -hmm. um, if you do have it, are you pulling up the Volcanion? I don't know. I, it, it's, he's not an immediate threat right now because let's, let's, let's uh, do the numbers here, right? Uh, he's hitting for 100, so he can't knock out the, the Lele they have. Okay, so Lele is vulnerable there. Uh, but if the 20 spread that, it, that he comes from it does not knock out the buzz with the energy on right now. So I'm not sure if it's an immediate threat worth taking just to one prize. I would almost venture to say take this knockout currently with the Lapras and hold the Lycanroc. The next turn, Bloodthirsty Eyes to Manaphy. There you go. And uh, Manaphy, uh, although with that powerful ability, free retreat with a basic water, uh, incredibly soft. Yep. Uh, we see Joe just hit that Max Elixir. He's going to Abyssal Hand for one. Um, and Sycamore, he's, all that garbage. They're all away. going in right now. So he's pretty much, this deck is incredibly small. So at this point, he's going to have everything. He's end proof. He's going to have like Rock and Hand, and he has two Buzzwolves set up. So I think everything is there in place for him to actually turn this game around and win the game. Exactly. And I keep harking back to that, that lap, or excuse it's me, that Volcanion yeah. turn. Uh, Lycan Rock comes down, pulls up Manaphy. He's going to eat it right now. I'm not sure if I'm a fan of that play because he can, uh, unless he didn't have the choice span or the, the strong energy to I guess the guess there as to why he didn't do that initially or did that over not the Lapras, but because his Lapras could just turn around and knock right back out. So uh, That Beast Ring, uh, kind of like Old Milk, not going to see, uh, see any play here. It's expired. Um, he could have played it technically, but he knows the contents of his deck. He just did an Ultra Ball Search mm -hmm. doing another one. Uh, no sense in playing it if he can. Getting another Lycan Rock. So I'm curious what the last card pieces you're looking here uh, for now, because my thought would be, I guess he's just missing the strong energy or choice span here, because that Labras can easily come back and just knock it right back out. And he also might have a good grasp on his prizes as well as we. I think we saw the strong energy. I can't believe I, I can't remember if it was in his deck or in his hand. However, mm -hmm. strong energy on that backup buzz 180 Tapu Lele yeah. knockout. Yep. And, you know, strong energy choice ban, knockout that's, on Lapras. I guess that's a very good point, too. Once this buzz is knocked out, it does free up a space for Diancy. Which, yep, is, is that 20-plus modifier. He's discarding the water, uh, making uh, Joe escape rope. Interesting. So if he's putting a Lycan Rock up, that's 100% telling me he has Guzman Hand. That's like the instant read I'm getting off that. Yep. And I think uh, Nick needs to realize that as well. However, I don't know if his hand is actually set up to uh, do anything about it. Mm -hmm. I see a couple supporters in there. He hit the choice band. I'm thinking he uh, he was trying Ooh, to abyssal hand for the that's end. That's also good to hold on this part because Lycanroc's turned to HP. Even with the choice band, Lapras can't touch that. So that's Correct. another good good call there. I'm bringing up a Lycanroc GX. So a couple little things that were that's happening here that. Um, is allowing Nick to get out of his game. Yep, and I can't say it enough, that Volcanion yeah. turn, uh, just not having that immediate backup, you know, uh, backup answer, kind of powered up, ready to go, to start taking those one hits back on Buzzwolves, mm -hmm. um, really allowing uh, Joseph to leverage the B-string, yep. and to kind of rally back in this game after a very, very uh, unoptimal start. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to think of different options here that he has, but you know, without ending him down to those two cards, which with double abyssal hand is kind of irrelevant, but hard retreat never what you want to see. Volcanion coming in, uh, as we mentioned, I would be hard pressed to to believe that Joseph doesn't have the the Guzma already. Everything should be set in place on, uh, at this point right now. I guess one thing here is if he has a choice being strong energy because Diancy cannot come down now on the field. Um, but this is a very good point here. So next turn, actually, he could take a knockout on the buzz in the back left right there after a second spread, and this Volcanion does not get knocked out. So um, this potentially could be enough to pull Nick back into this. Yep, he needs to close the door on this game right now. I think this turn is going to determine it all. If he has the pieces, then it's, it's, it's game over. I see a flowstone, so I think the writing's on the wall there. Um, but does he have enough to take the game? Well, with double uh, abyssal hand, if he has actually, oh my gosh, if he does not knock out his volcano right now, volcano can take four prize off the lightning rock and the buzzle. So he needs to end it now. Yeah, that that volcano needs to go away immediately, and I think 
with the with the knuckle knuckle impact, it will do that. Wolf Canyon is 130 HP, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, it 160. is 160. 160. It's a, it's a big boy. Found it kind of following in line with uh, some of the other uh, one prize attackers we've seen mm -hmm. hit the stream today. Uh, 160 HP, very awkward, very awkward. This is gonna be so weird because how many aqua patches and elixir he plays? Because he can like. So uh, I think three, kind of three, three patches, three elixir. Uh, if Nick played a rescue structure, he could do like an insane play to where he can. Bring back the Volcanian, Aqua Pass shenanigans, and then just win the game. Yep. But unfortunately, we don't see a Super Rod or a Rest Stretcher to do that play. So uh, it's just going in with, with Lapras now. Lapras comes up. Energy off the top. Uh, I think there's only one place that can go. Yeah, he's all in this Lapras now. He's going to look at his options here through the Brooklyn, Brooklyn Hill, Hill. Two Waters, and I think that was a Cynthia or a Guzma. I couldn't tell. Um, but yeah, I think he's just, he's, he has two prizes also. They both have options to win this game. And actually, I believe Joseph only needs one uh, prize now. I don't think he has two prizes anymore. I think he has one. So. Yeah, he only has one prize left. So actually, um, it's just a Rimmeray Octillery knockout away from winning the game. Yeah, uh, I mean, an N wouldn't even have done any, uh, wouldn't have done too much damage with Octillery. Um, if Joseph can find one of his damage modifiers here, he's got, uh, he's got, he's got it, he's right got it locked it. up. Yep. And like just right on cue, the choice man uh, was there. He was ready to set up for it and wins the game, won the Lapras. Yeah, that was a very uh, back and forth match. Um, say it once, say it again, one more time. That Volcanion, I would have liked to see a Lapras. Uh, maybe an attachment that went on that Tapu mm -hmm. Lele could have gone on the Lapras. Um, he does play those uh, energy switches, yep. which maybe is why he's being a little bit more uh, free. free or loose with yeah. his attachments. Um, however, not getting two energy on a new Lapras to be able to step up, yep. take advantage of him playing four choice bands, and being able to hit 190 fairly easily with all his energy recovery cards and energy acceleration cards, mm -hmm. and he was stuck with uh, with a Volcanion. Yeah, I think the, the game plan here for going forward for Nick is just to, to streamline Lapras is uh, on this point. While Volcanion did have a chance to put potential of that four prize play, um, Joseph was just too set up with, with both buzzwolves to let that happen. Yeah. So, um, going here, let's get some Lapras on the board, let's accelerate his energy, maybe do some collect and get some items in your hand, force your opponent to end you in, uh, really start taking over this game. Honestly, uh, have a first turn just like game one, um, hit one more Max Elixir, Yep, and change that volcano into a Lapras, and uh, I think the game would have been. We, we, we would have been. We would have been off to the races with uh, Lapras. I think check marked for game one. Uh, Nick, however, having a very successful day with this deck, uh, I can only imagine has tested it, understands the ins and outs, maybe a little bit better than we do at our first exposure in the booth. Mm -hmm. um, but that's just kind of uh, what I saw from that game, and maybe some adjustments that can be made. Mm -hmm. um, you know. It's kind of petty to say hit more max elixirs, but sometimes that's just the recipe for success. It, it's actually baffling to me with 13 energy that he even missed two of those. Yeah, and you see uh, Joseph playing nine fighting. I think he hit two of his three. So, and another Tapu Lele start, unfortunately, for Nick. Baby Buzzwool coming down early. Uh, interested to see if that's going to make... Uh, make an impact this game. Uh, we didn't see it last game. Yeah, and you know, it almost kind of like is, uh, I want to say slap in the face, but when I where I felt like a baby buzz came out, the regular buzz of GX actually put in more work. So uh, I'm curious if actually it's going to come into affect this game. Uh, but I think you have the right strategy there. It's, it's pretty much Lapras versus Buzzle GX. Who's going to get going first? Yep, I think it's just a little bit uh, easier <clears throat> for Buzzwool to hit that 190 number than Lapras. You know, mm -hmm. Lapras relying on that choice band. Uh, Buzzwool with all those uh, beast energy, choice band, strong energy, Deancey, all of those. Even allow just jet punch. Yeah. A couple jet punches put Lapras in one shot range for a knuckle punch. Or knuckle it, impact, sorry. Yep. Uh, and, we, I mean, we didn't see any jet punches last game. Yeah, he went, he went straight into Absorbs GX, and, and I think that has to do with his lackluster start with Lele. But even then, choice band, three energy. Okay, let's roll the ball. Yep. He, uh, he, he. Uh, was able to finally use, I think it's the first beast ring we've seen on camera mm -hmm. uh, for one of rounds we've commentated, how strong that card is. That card you only, is you only need to play powerful. it once. You only need to play it once in that 3-4 prize range, and that's uh, you know that was one of the pivotal points on his mm -hmm. side, on Joe's side of the board to kind of take advantage of that game one. Here we go. Choice man down on the Lapras. So, Nick. So it's uh, Lapras, Rimmerade, Mirror. It's like last game. Yep, 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 yep. Uh, we see a water energy there. Uh, Volcanion coming down early. Now, in this instance, I may prioritize a Volcanion early. 
the reason being you can set the, the gold like with Volcano is setting up that damage, right? So even if you went earlier when he was missing those choice bands there, mm -hmm. Volcano would put those in the, in the spot to one shot it. So we just saw uh, Nick use Jet Geyser to get exactly the situation I was talking about when there's one inactive, one on bench, you're trying to you know have your preferred starter up front, what have you. Uh, he goes, nah, rotate him out, half of an escape rope. Yep. And now Baby Buzz is up front, clipping for 30. You know, you really want that Baby Buzz in there when Nick is down to four prizes. Yep. We'll take a full advantage of the Brooklyn Hill on both sides here, uh, being able to search out a water or fighting basic Pokemon. And, you know, showing that Octillery has great synergy with these fighting decks because of it. Yep. Nick has had a search uh, already because of the Brooklyn Hill. Joe gets a Remoray down. So critical to get those draw, uh, draw po support Pokemon on your bench early to start using that Abyssal Hand ability. And I think that's critical in most decks in the standard form right now is having that actual, like, dedicated draw through a Pokemon. Yep, uh, a, a deck we haven't necessarily seen, but Beast Box, Naganadel, hits 120 damage for all the Ultra Beasts in play on your side of the board. Uh, the reason it's worse than Zoroark is Zoroark has trade stapled onto exactly. it. Exactly. It can do the same damage damage output. Yes, it's a double colorless. However, that trade is what makes you be able to ha. hit those double colorless. Trade. Trade. Um, Remoraid's in. Remoraid's down. Uh kind of just been uh, <laughs> spinning our wheels here in this particular turn. Uh, yeah, might start softening up this Tapu Lele, Sycamore. I mean, I think it's safe to say that Buzzwell starts are typically pretty predictable in a sense, as long as you hit, you know, A, B cards, Brickley Hill, Energy, give me Remoraid, next. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> while, while very uniform, and, uh, it, it, is, it is something that is to be done. Uh, something to keep in mind and know their GX markers aren't flipped back over. That doesn't mean they've used them this game. It just means they haven't reset them from reset. last game. However... Getting down a rock rough uh, and a max elixir on that rock rough, you know, threatening that dangerous rogue. He's already got four Pokemon bench. That knocks out anything on Nick's side of the board. Dangerous rogue is like one of the most pressuring attacks I feel like in the game right now, where it just controls your opponent to really look at their board state and, and analyze what should I do going forward because over benching can punish you in a heartbeat. Yep, we see uh, uh, that 80 damage go on Tapu Lele. Max elixir from Nick hitting one of his 13 energies. Well, I guess 12 left in the deck because he discarded one turn one. Um, Max Elixir down, Manaphy down, Sycamore, and he's, he's thinking I can hit an Aqua Patch here, uh, maybe a Max Elixir, Energy Switch, Max Elixir, all right. So we can have uh, we can have a nice little uh, attach for turn, you know, if yep. he hits Max Elixir, we can attach for the Lele, Retreat, yep. Energy, uh, back up excuse me, energy switch back up and be able to take a knockout on Baby Buzz and eat up that strong energy resource, that choice band resource. Yep. So definitely uh, a very intricate play here that you can get with the energy switch combo there. <clears throat> we see, uh, you know, he ultra balls for that Octillery, again, setting up that draw support. And it also gives him another crack at uh, hitting uh, an Aqua Patch or two. Mm -hmm. And I think that Manaphy is incredibly safe right now without having our Rock Riff out. So if you can get a little bit ahead in the game here and get that Lapper set up and take these initial knockouts uh, before... Uh, Joseph comes back with the Rock Ruff. I think he'll be in a regular spot. Max Elixir. No way. He bricks it off yet so again. What, two, two for five. I think there's, what, two energy in the discard right now? Let me see. One. Two energy in the discard, discard one in play. So he had play. ten, theoretically ten left in deck. We yeah. can't see the prize cam here. Uh, but that is a rough go. He wanted to hit that energy switch, knock out the baby buzz. Mm. So Abyssal, maybe, can he get an Aqua Patch? He, can he get a, uh, his, he a did, Max Elixir? Just test return, so he needs a Max Elixir or Aqua Patch to solidify this Field play. Field blower, I do not think he got there. Uh, that was rough. That, that is not looking good. That he had baby a nuclear buzz. start last game, and unfortunately can't duplicate that here in game two. But collect can still, with, with Buzzle active, not doing too much right now, collect, get him three cards, can oh. reset his board. Elixir's the next card, and then Energy's the card after that. Uh, those are rough beats. <laughs> you know, you, you just need to hit something. Mm -hmm. And, uh, of course, you collect for the three cards that you would have liked to see on your Abyssal for three. Mm -hmm. Another buzz comes down. Joseph, Brooklet Hill, uh, going to keep developing his board. Uh, might see a Deancey, might see a Rock Ruff here. I'd like to see Diancy here for the for going back to our points earlier to where you know field blowing choice bands off, not having a strong energies there, having a Diancy guaranteed there uh, could be especially helpful in this matchup. Um, I don't think uh, Joseph's going to get much mileage out of his max elixirs this game. Uh, we saw the super odd already go down, uh, a basic fighting energy, you know, mm -hmm. only eight left in the deck. Maybe that's something he's considering when searching things up now. Yeah. Um, can't rely on hitting those necessarily. Mm -hmm. Just something to keep in mind. Nick, on the other hand, can't can't buy a water energy with his max elixirs, mm -hmm. despite yeah. playing 13 energy in his uh, in his 60 cards. 
rock rough down is nice uh just even getting an attachment on rock rough just threatening um, yeah i think just setting that up right now and slowly building up because i mean he took game one nick nick's pretty anemic right now now you're really getting set up and you know we can honestly uh just create a strong board here and i don't think he's a abyssal hand yet so nope that is still free. right here you think you should get a high five for a, a no hand abyssal? No, 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 no. You just can't. You just can't hand those out. This ain't UNICEF. You just don't get uh, get those. <laughs> um, very interesting. We're gonna have Did a judge. Yep, he yep. accidentally uh, abyssaled for six, I think. For seven, but it was just uh, figuring out what order the cards came off when he was drawing. Which is important for the integrity of the game. They caught it. They made an adjustment. Uh, table judge probably giving him a nice little talking to. Like, take your time, pay attention to what you're doing, go through uh, step by step, action after action. You know, being on the stream stage can honestly be a little uh, nerve wracking at times. So sometimes you just miss those little, little tweaks, as we saw even with pro players such as Ahmad and Jay Young earlier, that happens to anybody. Yeah, it just takes a little bit of the shock of the lights, getting frazzled a little bit. And uh, Buzzwool coming in, like you said, Jet Punch, softening up, softening up those GX Pokemon. Uh, and that Knuckle Impact now can kill that Lapras without any modifiers. Yeah, I think honestly, it, you know, even though, uh, yes, Nick can just free retreat his Lele with the Manaphy, I mean, just, you know, chipping away at these Lapras uh, from the bench. Watch it on active. It's a very good spot to be in. All and right. there's the elixir. All right, we hit one. We're three for six. We're back up to 50%. Um, should probably be a little bit higher than that with the amount of energy he plays. You know what? It's still better than Shaq's free throw percentage, so we get somewhere. <laughs> That's 110% true. Uh, Nick showing that he's uh, a little bit better from the free throw line with Max Elixirs than the Shaquille O'Neal. Uh, Laker legend. Retweet that. So Max Elixir <laughs> down, shuffled up. Here we go. Is he going to discard another water energy with this Ultra Ball? Or? He is hungry for those Aqua Patches. I don't think he hasn't hit any yet, so... Yeah, yes, uh, he hasn't hit any. Um, right. He's hit them all in his Max Elixirs, ironically enough. So I just enough. saw three through the skim, and yeah, he has Ultra Ball just to get rid of his hands. Obviously for extra Abyssal draw there. Um, but there's definitely three Aqua Patches, and I'm not sure if he has one in his hand already, but it could be an explosive turn here for Nick. Okay, so this brings us back to the point. Are we are we just kitting up another Lapras for that return KO on a Buzzwool? Um, or, or if we hit a bunch of uh, uh, Aqua Patches, are we going to the other Lapras? Uh, it, so it's really weird. So if you hit, I guess, enough to instantly set up this Volcanian, but I mean instantly, like you, you get the three on there and attack, I'd go for Volcanian because it just, it just sets up so many different knockouts right there. Hard but, lessons learned from last game. I think he realized yes, what he should have exactly. been doing and just immediately locking in for that uh, backup Lapras. The Volcanian, I think, is really good for early game, right? And But that, that mid to late game, uh, depending on how your game goes, is really not the best card to do. And I think while it's really cool, the effect, and being able to pull it out there and actually pull it off, uh, but I think there's just better ways to go about winning the game. I do think Nick has a Guzman in his hand, so, uh, you know, if... Uh, Joseph can't take a knockout on this Lapras, so he will be able to reset that Blizzard Burn if he wants it. Um, you know, I think it's Aqua Tube providing that free retreat on that Tapu Lele, so he gives him a pivot point mm -hmm. or even the other uh, uh, Lapras. Two Max Elixirs off the top here. We'll see if with eight energy in deck that uh, Joseph is a little bit luckier than Nick. We're at, four, we're at five in the sixth card. All right. I think uh, that makes I, a little more sense. Yeah, I think the statistical vibe on that is about more accurate. You know, caught up finally. Uh, after he kind of got to hit uh, a majority of his in the first game. Using Brooklyn Hill while he's shuffling up. Just so, a, a, so uh, uh, another little point there, too. Order of Operations. If you know for sure you're going to get a Pokemon, uh, you should Brooklyn Hill before you back Slixer. Yep, one, one card less just improves a couple percentage points there. Um, and when you are so slim on basic energies to hit with your Max Slixer, if it's truly important, Every uh, percentage th counts. then everything counts, exactly. Another Max Elixir. Are we seeing this, gonna, or is it going to go on the Rock Rough? If he hits, he does hit. In 100% sure. Uh, well, yeah, it has to go on the Rock Rough here because I think the Buzzle is a target for next turn. Yep, 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 I agree. Uh, and it's, it seems like McClure agrees as well. Again, always threatening. Full bench. Uh, that... Uh, Good night. What, dangerous, GX rogue? dangerous Rogue. That GX attack <laughs> went in one ear, out the other. Couldn't remember from my life. Uh, with a full bench is a lot of damage. All right. And we do see the uh, Baby Buzz will take effect as the first attack, uh, which was called, uh, what again, sorry? Uh, uh, sledgehammer. A, sledgehammer. So I think we're going to see. So he, Nick does have a Guzman hand uh, from uh, last turn, I believe. 
Are we going to target down that buzz and then, you know, give him one dangerous rogue and then just be done? I would 100% just uh, tap into Lapras. It's inactive. And while Dan's rogue can pull up anything like that, uh, yeah, hold on to elixirs. This whole, I, I probably would have held on to him, honestly, because you could uh, spread them out elsewhere depending on where he's in dangerous rogue GX. I, uh, I think I like Guzming up the, the Buzzwool, resetting your Blizzard Burn, yeah. taking another knockout. And like I said, just kind of put them on uh, that baby Buzz, and, which you can one hit back with the Lapras, yeah. with a clean Lapras. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, making them go into that Lycan Rock. And, you know, maybe you can pivot from there. Yep. Claw Slash, not nearly as impressive as its initial Dangerous Rogue. Yeah, the Dangerous Rogue is the attack used for, for uh, Lycan Rock there, but... Uh, it looks like he's going with the Volcano in here, uh, which I... If you got another Guzma. energy in hand, we can see Guzma on the Rock Ruff spread. Nope, Guzma on uh, I think the, the Guzma on the Rock Ruff would have been an insane move, actually, now that you mentioned that. To spread... Oh, uh, yeah, that, I think that would have been a, a credible play there. But uh, he is going for Buzzle, like you mentioned earlier. Go ahead and take out the, the immediate threat. Uh, while Bloodthirsty Eyes will come probably uh, next turn. He did hit another Aqua Patch here. I don't know if he has any uh, water energies left in discard. He should 100% have water energies. We're about discard. to find out. Is he going to put this on Lapras and spread his attackers? Yes. Nope. <laughs> Went right to the Volcanion. No, That's the sir. weird thing, because if you put on the Lapras, either Volcanion and Lapras just one attach away, and you're not putting all your all your eggs in one basket. But that's why. Use, using the uh, his energy switch there, uh, very classic uh, copy of energy switch he's using today, taking that knockout down to just two prizes out of B-string range. Mm-hmm. And uh, Joseph still has six prizes to take, and we are just under 14 minutes left in this round. This, this could be one of those examples to where it could be a tie, but let's, let's say Nick takes this game. I think both these decks are fast enough that you could actually get a third game in. Oh, yeah. Dunk capabilities are real strong between these two. Uh, Dangerous Rogue GX coming up. Or excuse me, not Dangerous Rose. Bloodthirsty Eyes. Blood I cannot eyes. get this, uh, this Lycan Rock sorted out. We are, we are uh, slacking here in the Lycan Rock department. And there's all his energies from the Elixirs earlier. <laughs> and with an Elixir at the bottom, uh, just, just, just for the mad trolls. Just snarking at him. Just for the mad trolls. Um, so, Nick's in a worse spot here. Give or take, right? Because, yes, you're going to lose Lapras. And, and I think that's why he went ahead and set the Volcanian. Because it's a 9 x attacker. And they can do the immediate 100 damage and set up, you know, other knockouts there, which, you know, puts like a rock two-shot range. And, like you're saying, Claw Slash isn't going to do much to a Volcano with 160 HP. Max Elixir misses, as predicted, as he's holding his probably his last three basic energies in his hand. Abyssals for one, Cynthia. So, here's a question. He played Max Elixir, maybe to thin, maybe for whatever. He did have Cynthia in his hand. Well, Cynthia was his hand to the Abyssal, correct? No, he drew... Professor Sycamore off of the uh, okay. the Abyssal one. Do you knowing you have your three basics and your deck is getting slim? Do you play the Max Elixir there? No, I think I honestly would bring the, put the Cynthia back, my, play Cynthia, and put the energy and Max Elixir back in my deck to use later on, and maybe draw back into it with the energies actually in my deck to be drawn. That's uh, that's kind of uh, what I'm feeling on that particular play. Uh, Joseph, my prioritizing. Hey, I'm, I don't know the exact count of N that Nick is playing, but I'm going to make myself as end proof as possible, getting rid of that chaff. Uh, leaning on Abyssal Hand. Of course, we see the Dangerous Rogue GX knockout on the Lapras, what we were discussing. Nick with just two prizes left to take, and he has a Guzma in hand. So, um, I think the big thing to, uh, to see there is that um, Joseph didn't bench on any other Pokemon. It is now just the Baby Buzz and Lycan Rock to uh, take the rest of the game for him. Yep, so Nick has to make interesting decisions here. Um, is he going to go up with that Volcanion, single prize attacker, soften up that Lycan Rock, and rely on that Guzma next turn? Uh, to take that, uh, to take the win if Joe retreats out. Um, he's just got to wade through these one-prize attackers right now because one-shotting a Lycanroc is effectively the same thing as, you know, cutting off, for example, if he knocked out an Octillery for draw support, what have you. Yep, and I, and I think that the, the goal here is actually to bring up the Volcano and just start going aggro with that. Um, because everything else is too fragile. So, uh, Jet Geyser could come up here and just take a knockout on a one-prizer. I'm not sure I like that. No, I think in this instance, I think like we were mentioned before, just bring up the Volcanian. Uh, if you have access to end, go ahead and play it. But um, and I don't think there's anything immediate that Joseph could do to kind of jump right back into this game. Yep. Um, you know, Nick being under four prizes, so Buzzwool is out of a strong attack range. So, but Guzma fighting energy does knock out that Lapras. 
Yes, it does. Yes, it does. And a Lele on bench. So, um, oh. Using his GX attack, the uh, I believe it's Ice Beam GX. Ice Beam GX, where it paralyzes, does 100 damage. Putting the screws to him, hey, do you have a Guzma here? Because you're going to need it. And actually, I think I saw the Guzma in Fighting Energy. Or maybe that, that Dark Heart was the, was the Beast Energy, so I might have had a mistake Something there. to keep in mind, though. To get out of Paralysis, he does have to Guzma. However, if he Guzmas, he, he can't knock out the Lapras, which is the, well, you have the a big Lele. Hit. Right, he can he can go down, but that Lapras, Lapras still steps okay, up and right. can hit can kill right. anything on his board. That's correct. And he knows he's still squatting on the Guzma. There's a scoop. And we see a scoop. I think uh, Joe sees the writing on the wall, and we are going to have just over 10 minutes for a game three here. We are back in the booth while they're shuffling up for game three. Uh, really just haymakers getting chucked back and forth. And, you know, I really like that Nick went to the route that we suggested to where let's get a bunch of lappers out. Um, yeah. And Volcano will get there when he gets there. Yeah, it's kind of, it can kind of be like a tertiary thing. Uh, primary, Lapras. Secondary, Lapras. Tertiary. Get that, get that Volcano yep. going. The 100, being able to pick off maybe a straggling rock ruff, mm -hmm. uh, you know, an, uh, an octillery, what have you, mm -hmm. and, and just kind of take it from there. But those Laprases are, are really doing the heavy lifting for him today. I think the big thing with him was once uh, for Joseph, where I think kind of sealed the deal, was him not hitting another buzzwall off of that Cynthia in the late game. He had beast ring, he had energy in his hand. Um, but not hitting that secondary buzzwall, I think was probably a, a big a big piece of the puzzle there. He, so he can... Uh, take back over the game did and again with just nine energy nine basic fighting playing the max elixirs the way you just naturally draw in the game i wouldn't be shocked if there were some times where you go to beast ring and uh Might not be there. You, you only have one or zero fighting in your deck or because they're, they're either caught in your hand they're already on the board for yep. through max elixir maybe you naturally attached one mm -hmm. and you just can't use the power of beast ring mm -hmm. as well as you'd like to yep yeah i fully agree there uh but uh, Joseph will get to go first in this matchup, and uh, we'll see how much he can explode. Because uh, between two games, he hasn't had really explosive starts. He had explosive mid-games. Correct. Um, which is kind of uncommon to what we normally see with the Buzzball deck. Is that a third that Lele is start? Thir how many Lele is he playing? Seven copies? Oh, my goodness. Two copies of Tapu Lele finding their way on the battlefield every yeah, I, game for I Nick. I feel like we're getting the unlucky draw here to where some people are just starting the cards they don't want. Tapu Finney with Michael Slutsky, Slutsky earlier starting at both games. Yep. Uh, and now here, Lele three games in a row for Nick. Joseph starting with uh, the Baby Buzzwool, a great uh, Pokemon to pressure that Lele if it's just going to be sitting there. Um, I think Nick can really mitigate those Tapu Lele starts better than a lot of other decks in the format right now. Aqua Tube, uh, Water Energy, you know. Yep. So, I mean, you're, you're setting yourself up temporarily for maybe a last, uh, a late game uh, energy drive if you need it. Uh, but also, hey, it's like a, a harder to get rid of floatstone. Yep. And yeah, those are very good points there. And uh, we do see the M, uh, both players resetting their hands here. Uh, Joseph needs a little bit more to get going, man. Nick, Nick, going off his past two games, has been able to explode both times. I think if Joe didn't play down the Brooklet Hill there, if he didn't have access to it, he wouldn't be playing in this turn. Okay. He'd be ma he'd be putting it on Nick to, I don't know what your hand is, but you've got to find another mm -hmm. water Pokemon of some sort, and I'm not going to help you out. However, since he didn't have a good setup himself, wanted to ensure he gets that Remoraid down his turn one. Brooklet, Remoraid, and let's roll. Now, I think the goal here, uh, you know, Puzzle, Rock Ruff. And he already has energy on active, so it's just, it's just kind of, you know, like we said before, the, the simple steps of Buzzwool, you know, while, while it gets a little bit tougher later in the game, you know, elixirs, energy, just overall get a little aggro with it. We're going to see what we're used to seeing with this uh, Buzzwool Lycan Rock deck. Max Elixir onto turn one Rock Ruff, threatened Dangerous Rogue from the mm -hmm. very beginning. As we know, Nick's bench gets cluttered quickly. Very quickly. And, and one thing to note there between both players with the Elixir, uh, McClure does what I favor to do is look at all the cards in your deck, especially if you haven't done an initial search on the Max Elixir. Whereas Nick is like, I got more water energy, I don't care what else is there. Uh, boom. Uh, given the amount of time left in this match, it might behoove them to not look at all the cards yeah. uh, in this particular situation. Might be good practice game one or two uh, with six minutes on the clock. Meh. Yeah. I, I think you just got to ride the lightning a little bit. Yeah, exactly. There. It, it is a tough thing to make that call, too, as uh, you know being mindful of how much time you have without the clock in front of you, too. Exactly right. Exactly right. Um, doing an Ultra Ball, his initial search, again, uh, time is of the essence here. I don't like dawdling too much in your deck. He, he probably already knows, hey, I want to get a Lapras, 
what depending on what Pokemon's in his hand, I think it's a Manaphy. So, you know, grab a Lapras, start kidding it up. He's got an energy switch, not a lot else. He has two energies, Manaphy and E D switch. So he I'm surprised he's not Oh, okay, so here's what's gonna happen. Uh Lele, energy active. Manaphy goes to bench. Probably another Lapras here or a Remoraid. And then he's gonna re retreat. E switch, collect. Yep. That sounds real good to me, my friend. Um, especially because he's going to want to collect this turn because he does not have another draw support in his mm -hmm, hand. Exactly. Which is an important thing to know with this deck. It's a great build, deck building feature is, okay, I might not have a supporter, but I don't have to Ultra Ball for Tapu Lele. I can Ultra Ball for my main attacker. Collect. Yeah, I think three cards is enough at times. You know, with, with how many four of these playing in this deck, he is bound to hit what he needs. I love E-Switch in this deck. Like, oh, it's, he, he's, it's he's great. He's proven his worth numerous times throughout this game. How many copies we run in today of that E-Switch? Two E-Switches. He's hit both times. He's both seen them. They keep rolling off the top. Unlike Water Energy on Max Elixir, <laughs> he's seen those energy switches a lot more often. Um, he did collect. We're back on McClure's turn right now. Choice man to the active baby Buzzwool. Guzma on Manaphy. Okay. So this is going to hit him for 60, and it, it's going to make it awkward because it's either force him to use a Guzma or put a water energy on Manaphy. Very weird spot. However, we do know I think he has his other energy switch in hand, so maybe not the the end of the world here yeah. for uh, for Nick. Uh, but Joe doesn't doesn't know that. He's making, uh, he's making the plays that give him the best opportunity to win mm -hmm. and take quick prizes, and uh, I think the path for him is through Manaphy. He was eyeing at Diancy there, but I think he's going to favor put this Buzzle out because he knows once his Lapras gets going, he's going to have a need a strong way to retaliate right back. Um, so he has an attached return, so I'm interested to see maybe... Uh, what did he grab? I can't see that under his hand. Buzzle, Buzzle. GX. Okay. Uh, it would have been interesting to see, let's see, Beast Energy, 30, 60, 90, Diancy, 110. All right, so we're still short. I was thinking maybe he could get there uh, uh, if he kind of hit all the right, the right cards. Right pieces, yeah. Uh, we are seeing 60 come down on Manaphy, and gosh, that is awkward. Um, Max Elixir is there in Nick's hand, so maybe we can see Max Elixir hit, fingers crossed, mm -hmm. onto, onto Lapras, um, manually attached to Manaphy, retreat, energy switch, mm -hmm. let's take a knockout. Yep. However, Joseph's still threatening uh, his board here. Rock Ruff is waiting in the wings. If Nick benches one more thing, that Lapras is done for. So I like to hope he gets to the Lapras right here off this Brooklyn Hill, um, and which actually it could just be in his hands. So we could see a Volcanium come down at this point, um, but like start spreading the energy, start, start getting everything set up. Like I mentioned though, he's burned a lot of his uh, energy switch related resources, and if he does put another Pokemon down, that Rock Ruff with no modifiers can hit 200 OHKO, that, that, uh, that Lapras right back. And then what is Nick doing, right? He's yep. just got Dangerous Rogued. Uh, he's down on prizes. Uh, Joseph can use Strong Energy. And now Claw Slash is fine because it's going to take Nick multiple turns knifing into this Lycanroc to even make a difference. Um, kind of like split, yep, splitting the hairs here. He goes, benching one is the same as benching two. Yep. Put them both down. Let's Octillery for the most uh, most amount of cards I can. And let's see what we can cobble together here. I think he's hoping for an explosive turn here. Uh, you know, and being able to maybe hit a Guzma, take out the Buzzwell before the threat. Maybe even a Rock uh, Honestly, rough. yeah, I'd say the Rock Rough is maybe is probably priority number one here. Yep. Um, that's, uh, that's the easiest way that Joseph has to take uh, one big knockout on a Lapras. Um, I think I did see the Guzma. There's a choice band in there. Does he have a water energy? Aqua Patch, water energy, anything else? Uh, he does not. So. Sigmore. And the Guzma was there. The Guzma was there. Uh, two water energy right off the top. I think that's the third. Uh, like four in his hand. That is three, an three. Uh, That's a lemony snicket, my friend. A series <laughs> of unfortunate events. I think he really wanted that extra water energy in his hand. Um, to get that rock rough right here. So who? What is Joseph going to bring up here after he just used uh, Volcano's ability? You discard that water. Uh, what? You have to bring up. It's a tough choice. I, I I certainly wouldn't be willing to sacrifice my rock rough. But I think you bring up the buzzle because you already seen him attach energy. So there's no way of retreating right now as Manaphy, correct? Uh, not right now. Not right now. There is not. I'm kind of like waiting with waiting with bated breath here because. You know, water energy, energy switch, and it's, you know, it's go time. Aqua Patch, bang. He can use his attachment for turn free retreat. 
and Nick just got himself so he has a free. Turn? I thought he attached to Lapras previously. Or was that mm -hmm. No, answer? he attached turn one, or he attached to the Lele turn one, retreated, energy switched, switched collect, Guzmud, uh, Max Elixir, Aqua okay. Patch, Max attach Elixir. for turn. Okay. So he had a lot of uh, a lot of options here, and you can really see that str the strength of that that half escape rope there. Mm -hmm. Not a lot of great decisions, uh, Joseph. Honestly, for me, given how long the games have been going, knowing Brooklet Hill is always accessible. If I know my second record Remoraid is in the deck, depending on the the construct of my yep. hand, I might just throw the Remoraid out there and say, "Okay, play around this." Remoraid or Baby Buzz, because like we said, Baby Buzz can't get to that 190 number that easily. So, so the Baby Buzz wasn't the active when he uh, jet guys. Was it? Okay, sorry. So his choice was between Rockruff, Remoraid, and Buzzwool. Uh, Rockruff coming down. Lele. Yeah, especially if I know Lele's in my hand. Yeah. I would, I would, you know, Brooklet Hill for the uh, Remoraid. Rockruff is still intact, theoretically. And then you still have Dangerous Rogue. You still have uh, other options. You still have your Lele in hand. Mm -hmm. Um, and able to grab a sycamore clean and then go to work. We'll have a hit the additional rim right after you do that. So, yeah, I think sacrificing the rim right there should have been a play. But uh, still, the, both, both players still these spots. So, there's only one lapper set up. Only one lapper set up, but Joseph isn't in a very great position here to pressure it uh, because Nick only took one prize, not two. So, beast rings aren't live right now. Yeah, but attached elixir choice man is also now in question. I mean, I guess, I guess if you're you are running that hot, do we have an elixir in the hand? Can we make that happen? He does have a Guzma. There's the second Remoraid. I would have much rather just seen that Remoraid eat the dust, and then give yourself an option. Like he could be, he could be uh, dangerous roguing right now for the knockout, and then Nick has nothing on his board. Mm -hmm. High pressure situation. You know, 4-0. They've been making great plays all day. Nick certainly sees a line that maybe we're not picking up in the booth here, um, but you know. Outsiders looking in, that's what I would have liked to see. Completely, completely agree there. And we see the Ancy Prism Star come down, uh, oh. giving all fights at Pokemon an active 20 extra damage to go with their attack. What's, uh, the, what's the name of that? Princess's... Princess's Charm? Princess's Sanctuary? Princess's Boost. Here we go. Uh, strong energy down on Buzzwall. Abyssal Hand for three. Ultra Ball rolling off the Princess's top. Princess's Cheers. Princess's Cheers. Rap Horn. <laughs> Uh, we see strong energy coming down on Buzzwold. Abyssal hand for three. I saw an Ultra Ball roll off the top. Now he's coming in for kind of underwhelming damage. Uh, I mean, it's like still, it's still I mean so 60, 20, so 80 damage? Yep. I don't know. 80 damage compared to Dangerous Rogue GX for you to have one yeah. energy on a Manaphy with 60 damage on it yep. is just seems infinite better to me. We're going to see a spreading of love here with the energies here and uh, the Guzma on the buzz. Okay, yep, and there it is with a knockout with Blizzard Burn. And, and do, like, wasted attached last turn. I don't know. <laughs> You're right over there, Kirk. I, I just, I don't know. Uh, Aqua Patch here, he's going to have another Lapras set up. Like, these are all plays that he wouldn't have had options to had uh, that Lapras just hit the hit the bin. Hit the River Raid instead of the... Uh... Yeah. And then, and then you still have... Knuckle impact with all your... I mean, you have enough modifiers now, strong energy. You had it all. However, beast rings on, baby. So are we... I think the time is out now, and we are in the, the three turns here. I'm not sure who is what. Um, we could very well be like, like turn two right now, or even turn one. Sometimes the timer that we have uh, is just a little bit off. Obviously, the table judge informing them, uh, they understand uh, where they are in the game, obviously, mm -hmm. if time has, in fact, been called. Just going through the motions here. So that's another thing. If he would have taken that GX knockout before last turn, mm -hmm. he would have had an option to take the easy knockout with anything on his side, on that mana yep. feed, down to two prizes, bang, uh, you have your beast ring, knuckle impact with all your modifiers, 180 plus a strong, and, and you've crossed the line over another Lapras. Bloodthirsty eyes coming down here. Such such a just an awkward spot to be in right now. Yeah, yeah. Not using it, probably wise. Yeah, I think the point now is just my, with what you have right now, it's currently just keep spreading that damage with the baby buzz. Uh, and has he abyssal hand yet? No, nope, he just he essentially just ultra balled, failed it, shuffling up. I think he's gonna abyssal hand here and uh, cross his fingers for a couple beast rings. And then if that's the case, if that was his goal in mind. Uh, 
why not bring up the Lapras on bench with the Bloodthirsty Eyes? Beast Especially Energy. Especially hit something like that. So, Beast Energy, 30-60. Deancey. We, uh, 210. 210? Beast Energy is 30, right? Yeah. So, if he, if he gets the other two energies, sorry, for knuckle impact. Oh, I got you, got you. And, of course, Beast Ring right there, as, uh, as uh, you, you mentioned it. Uh, coming on, and what were we talking about yep. in, tw- in yep. between games? Yep. The you know, energy you, can come sometimes, sometimes bite you in the butt. Yeah, you know, he wanted, he really wanted two there. He's got one in hand. Just a, a silly setup on his side of the board. Incredibly geared up to win if he had more time. However, there is not there much is time. Not. So, you know, just the importance of having taken a GX knockout two turns ago. Yep. Is the difference between him potentially winning and what is almost inevitably a draw here. The unfortunate thing, yes, it probably will be coming to a draw, and it's going to be one of those things where you feel so as players should be punished, in a sense, for... Uh, well, what it did here is it allowed Nick now to... He, like, he's get, he still gets two turns. If he's won, he gets yep. one and three. He's got three prizes. Yep. He can feast on something easy, say, okay, kill one of my Laprases, and then his Lapras can come back with both of them have choice bands, knock out a Buzzwool, and he, he, just, he just snaked yep. one. He just snaked the game. So yeah, we're going to see a hard retreat here. Probably just move the dice to their lappers, knock out the Zach the Buzzwell, and the next turn have the Guzma for game potentially. If if depending on where we're at in the three turns. Yep. Uh, yep. He's gonna he's gonna make him. Uh, oh. He's gonna make him half escape rope. Lycanroc coming up. Do we have? We haven't supported this turn. He haven't attached this turn. Um, Max Elixir. Here we go. Top two. See, I'm curious if, you, if I were to use the ability right there, and I guess it all depends where we're at in turn three also, because you can't knock out a Lycan Rock. And you need, if, if you are turn one or turn zero, you got to take two knockouts. Right. Right, right, right. Um, so we see that energy go onto the Volcanion. Uh, third energy going on, attachment for turn. Does he have a Guzma in his hand? What's he, what well, are we doing? He just played Sycamore, so he can't, he can't play Oh, he did play right Sycamore. Now. Okay, so, I missed that. I which missed why, that. which is what we're going back to is, you know, why use the ability? But so now we have a Volcanion that can eat an Octillery. Yeah, and I believe Diancy has but, a 90 HP. Can eat that too. Three prizes. He gets two cracks out of here. So with the paralyzed move right there. We, they, there's no way they're in time. What just happened? Is he scooping? Unless time was called in a part of the game where we didn't know. We just missed it. We didn't see like a judge hand or anything kind of indicating there. You know, maybe something we work on for the next round is a dice indicator whenever time is officially called by the judge. But um, I can't tell who won. I don't know if it's a tie. Very ant- anticlimactic finish so, to uh, to that. Um, a lot of interesting decision trees being followed by both players in games, specifically one and three. Yeah. Um, I think game two, uh, uh, we see the tie circled there. We it see the tie circled, yep. Um, I can't help to think that they're going to walk away uh, from from this round, they're going to walk around from this round. Both of them thinking, I, I should have that fifth win here. Yep, 100 percent there. And, and, you know, both these decks are truly like you know fearless when it comes to just hitting those elixirs, hitting those beast rings there. But a couple little things in the game, like you're saying, not bring up the river raid potentially, uh, which would have pressured uh, your your him. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Nick to not bench any lot more lappers, which yep. would have uh, had a strong bloodthirsty eyes to a dangerous rogue GX in the knockout. So exactly. So we're gonna take a quick break. Um, I don't believe we'll be having a winner's interview simply because we didn't have a winner. Um, and we will be back for round six of more Pokemon TCG action here in Madison, Wisconsin.